Welcome to Drawfee, where we take your dumb ideas and make even spookier drawings. Ooh. Uh. Um, I am a writhing mass of flesh and wings and mouths known as Caldwell Tanner. I have a negative uh, sanity score, Nathan Yaffe. <laughs> I think I'm referred to as Monster Mom Julia. <laughs> and I have no mouth or nostrils. Or ears, or eyes, and I'm Tristan. <laughs> Yay! He's just a floating brain, <laughs> communicating directly into our subconscious. Mm-hmm. Just a big old brain with a beard. But guess what? You can hug this brain. <laughs> it's fine. It won't hurt. The most huggable brain. <laughs> I chose this voice on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it might hurt a little bit. It will definitely hurt some. <laughs> Guys, what are we doing? What are we doing this week? Well, it's it's the month of October. It's it's we're on the road to hell, Christmas, Nathan. Yes, uh, the the spookiest month of all. And who's the spookiest cat uh, this side of Arkham? Why it's H.P. Lovecraft, of course. So we've recruited uh, our friends Julia and Tristan uh, to help us do a Lovecraft drawing challenge. I'm going to challenge you, folk, to draw the undrawable. The unknowable uh, gods of the Lovecraft, uh, some people might know it better as the Cthulhu universe. Mm -hmm. There are lots of terrifying gods in this pantheon, and wow, what a rabbit hole. We're going to get right into it. Basically, what I'm going to do is going to give you a name. You're going to try to draw it. Uh, Unlike other times, I'm going to maybe actually give you some tips on what they actually look like, Mm -hmm. because it will still be impossible to draw them. Yeah, I think just a lot of writhing masses of flesh and mouths and tentacles. It's going to be a good time. This is coming hot off the heels of our cryptids challenge, and I think this is going to be a a fun departure. I'm just going to draw a big lizard. (laughs) Yeah, it's like either either a writhing mass of tentacles or just a real strong lizard are the two (laughs) sort of categories that I'm aware of. Wow, you you guys read their wiki too, huh? All All right, right, Tristan. Nathan, uh, you're up first. Yeah. Your monstrosity today, Yog Sothoth. Yog Sothoth. So, um, I thought I would start us off in pretty typical uh, Lovecraft fashion. It sounds drippy. Is he drippy? It's drippy. It is mostly known and seen as a writhing mass of tentacles and orbs. Orbs. Okay. Cool. Cool. Do you think that H.P. Lovecraft had like a super? He got like a super spooky dictionary for his tenth birthday. Oh, oh, I've got just the passage about Yog sothoth that definitely, like, is all thesaurus up in there, okay? I'll give you, I'll give you it, okay? Uh, imagination called up the shocking form of fabulous Yog sothoth <laughs> Ooh, Only great. Only a congeries of iridescent globes, yet stupendous in, it, in its malign suggestiveness. So, like, a disco ball made of tentacle spaghetti. Mm-hmm. Excellent. Yep. There you go. In my head, yog is like the advanced form of sog. It's like when something gets so soggy, it gets yogi. <laughs> it gets yogi, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When you leave your uh, your checks in in the in the milk too long, it sort of congeals because yeah. of that uh, paste. It becomes yeah, it becomes a full glue. <laughs> Tristan, I feel like I've. I've learned so much about drawing drippy things mm-hmm. since uh, since we started inviting you uh-huh. on the program. Of course. Well, you know, when you, you, you draw a Lannister one time, am I right, guys? <laughs> ah. I'll just let that one sit. I'll just let it sit That's for a great. Now bit. we can tag Game of Thrones in the description <laughs> of this episode. I can tell you a little bit more more about Yogg's uh, backstory, if that would help. Okay. Yogg is, like, not super mean, unlike most of the uh, characters in this, and the gods in this universe. Mm -hmm. He's just chilling out. He's, like, a gatekeeper, and also he is the gate, and also he's the key. He's, like, all those things, and, like, people are like, hey, I want to gaze into the, the gaping maw of reality and other universes. He's like, yeah, I mean, sure, dude, if you want. (laughs) <laughs> that's your bag. That, I mean, if that's your thing, I'll I'll open this terrible portal for you. Just you know, uh, don't blame me for for uh, you know the problems in your life that come after. So Tristan, they're like a gatekeeper. So like when you you go see them and talk about uh, unknowable horrors and elder gods, they're like, oh yeah, really? We'll name three elder gods that you know of. Just thought thought so. You're a fake Lovecraft fan. They they're like that. 
he's yeah, a, they're exactly like okay, that. Okay, he's a wow. gate. He's a gatekeeper. Okay, so he's got he's got to have like he's got to get get some like bouncer sort of aesthetic. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I like that. Maybe some like some thick boots. Just shove those tentacles into some boots, Nathan. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> all of them. All of those tentacles in some boots. <laughs> wow. Uh, I really would like to show you the unthinkable, but you're not on the list. So, uh... <laughs> Frida Kahlo, you win. So he is holding like a uh, a cosmic clipboard of some yeah. sort. <laughs> 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 I would really like to let you in to the time beyond time <laughs> and the space beyond space, but uh, not with those shoes. <laughs> uh, list the list, you know. You know, I can't I can't betray the list. I know uh, I. <laughs> I'm a cosmic entity that lives outside of time itself, but, you know, I got rules. It's like I'm wearing Timberlands, and he's not letting me in, but he's wearing Timberlands. So, like, I don't get it. Like, what's this dress code seems arbitrary is all I'm saying. He's not letting himself in either. No. You can stand out. You can stand outside with him. Shit, is that? I don't go to clubs much, but, like, is that how you get in? Is you're like, well, would you let yourself into the club, and then they malfunction, and then you can sneak past them? Is that how it works? They are robots. It's, that's... <laughs> <laughs> or like riddle masters at the very least. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's either you have to be dressed appropriately or able to solve their riddles. Uh, I love I love club culture, as you can tell. I love how he's like kind of muffin topping over his own boots. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's got really stuffing them all in there. Yeah, it's hard. Like if I had four hundred feet, it would be very difficult to get them into two pairs of shoes. <laughs> this just makes me want to see um, an octopus wearing boots in real life. Can somebody, can somebody we have any, do that? Can anybody, can, do we have any marine biologists that follow the show? <laughs> marine biologists that uh, are allowed to just dress up their, <laughs> their octopuses. Dog, that would be like the best Instagram channel. Can you imagine though? I'm going to just make two of the orbs his eyes. I think that all the orbs could be eyes. I mean, that's always, I, I think that's a safe guess. He probably sees a lot uh, of right. stuff, you know? Oh, I like that. <laughs> he does look kind of like he's posing. <laughs> well, he's fabulous. <laughs> That's true. He's posing. He's yeah. Let's get. You want to give him? Maybe, yeah, maybe he's got some like uh, some bracelets. <laughs> he's got some leather bracers or some bangles, perhaps. Could he have like maybe like a, a little stamp, just so that you know that you know you're cool. That okay. You're allowed through the portal. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like a sigil that he brands you with, so, mm-hmm. so that you can get into the the club beyond time and space. Yeah. 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 Um. He he's got that uh, right here. Mm-hmm. Uh, the little, <laughs> little hand stamp. I'm really hung up on the fabulous angle here and like the the stunning nature of Yog Sogoth. I'm wondering, uh, Yog Sog, Yog Sothoth? Oh boy. Just Yog. Just Yog is fine. Yeah. <laughs> I just want him to have like a tiara or something. Oh yeah, tiara. Why not? Just have, <laughs> let's have that like sort of going uh, this way. Okay. I guess when you're a, a writhing mass of tentacles, a tiara is basically just like a bracelet. Yeah. Tristan, have you read much H.P. Lovecraft? Not not a ton, to be honest with you. Julia, have you read any Lovecraft? Nope. Me neither. This is great. I actually, I, I started researching and then, uh, like with most things for Drawfee, I stopped myself because I wanted to go in clean and pure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So Drafi is actually preventing me from learning at this point in my life. We prevent other people from learning. I see so much uh, people posting about how they watch us instead of doing their homework. Right. Yep. Um, so it should prevent us from learning too. It's only fair. Do you think we should be encouraging that behavior or or nipping that in the bud? I think uh, do do you? I would be okay. it would be <laughs> hypocritical for me to encourage anyone to do their homework. That's that's for sure. <laughs> I'm going to make sure that all Drawfee fans, here's the thing, if you are uh, a Drawfee fan and you're in school, you have to submit your report card to me. That's that's the new rule. <laughs> There's a new plugin for YouTube where I can unsubscribe you. If you get uh, lower than a C on your report card, uh, then I'm unsubscribing you. That's pretty lenient still, but like lower than a C, 70, uh, 78 or below or above is the is the gate. I'm the gatekeeper for Drawfee now is what's happening. Wow. This does just look like a real fucked up uh, inkling from Splatoon. <laughs> this is this is their yeah. This is the inkling, Dad. <laughs> it seems like the inkling is permanently stuck between Squid and Kid. <laughs> yeah, something went wrong. 
<laughs> I mean, I imagine that's what a like ghost story uh, or a, a tale of strangeness from the world of Splatoon would be. Gregor Samsa woke up and found that he was both squid and kid. <laughs> he was wearing a really trendy shirt under all those tentacles. <laughs> oh, yeah. I forgot to give him his, uh, his leather bracelet. Thank you. Yes. I mean, I will say that those boots are pretty tr- trendy. He's pretty fab. Yeah. I got to I got to give it to him. Um but you know, this is this is a spoopy Halloween episode uh for for October and uh I'm just the warm up. Caldwell, do you want to draw a nightmare? I'm ready. I w- I want to pluck from the void that which cannot be drawn. Let me uh let me look up uh, a a depiction of our good pal Yog. Oh, it's the flying spaghetti monster. It- I mean, it really, it really is the exactly the flying spaghetti monster. Yeah, I, I guess I, I didn't do enough orbs. I tried to, I tried to focus on the tentacles. Oh, this is a fun one. He's got like a little lion face. Mm-hmm. I like the face that you did. You did kind of like a Cthulhu light face, which is nice. I, just, I drew an inkling. <laughs> I drew an inkling, and uh, I very, don't, I don't hate it. It's very fresh, Nathan. Tristan, do you have a monstrosity for me to try and parse? Okay, I've got um, for you, Safagwa. Safagwa. <laughs> Sa- Great. Safagwa. It's one of those si- silent T at the beginning. All right, Safagwa. Um, I'm just gonna I, I'm gonna start with the face that that you have to the way that you have to contort your face to even say that word. So you're just kind of like Safagwa. Safagwa. It's like Safagwa. Yeah, just a big big mouth. Because I my guy didn't have a mouth. I would say either uh, no mouth or uh, too many mouths. Yeah, there's no in between. I'm definitely going to go with too many mouths, I think, is the way that I'm going to approach this. Okay. So just roughing in some mouths there. Yeah. So one of them saying sa, one of them saying fa, and one of them saying gua. You got it. This is like a, a an infernal chorus. Um, and they, yeah, this is, they, they say their name. They are like a Pokemon, I think. Yeah. Fa, fa, gua. I am going to give him just some, some real gnarly teeth, though. Tristan hasn't even gotten to describe this creature yet. Yeah, Caldwell which... just has an idea, and he's going. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just drawing, like, a, a weird-ass cheap cheap from Mario, but Tristan, if you want to... <laughs> I was going to say, which Golbat is this? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is the... Yeah, they, they're introducing a new Golbat for the, the next game. But Tristan, if you wanted to give me some, some further instructions, I would not sure, turn them down. Sure, I don't know how we're going to be able to square this up with what we've already got here, but here's a description of one of the, one of the official texts. I'm excited. Uh, <laughs> you shall know Sathagwa by his great girth and his bat-like furriness and the look of a sleepy black toad, which he has eternally. The look of a what? A, a sleepy black toad. You know, one of them, not one of them active you know. on the go toads. So I, I got girth, I got bat-like fur. So he's a furry, a furry, lazy, sleepy toad. All right, so I'm going to go, I guess I'll, I'll keep the, I do like what I'm working with here as far as mouths are concerned. Should I, um, should I, I'm going to toad up these eyes though. And make them sleepy. Yeah, so kind of like. Make, give him some sleepy toad eyes. Oh, oh God. Oh, no. Just kind of like, uh, yeah, uh, you know what? Even even more lumpy, I think, kind of like over here. Uh-huh, yeah. There we go. There it is. Just nice. Oh. oh. oh Sathagwa. Sathagwa. Oh, Sathagwa's sleepy. This, this is just Pepe, right? <laughs> this is Pepe. This is... This is what Pepe has become. Yeah, this is the, they represent the same evil at this point. <laughs> All right, now this is good so far, but I do need to add. Um, I gotta add some bat elements. A furry bat creature is that what I'm getting? Yep, bat-like furriness. Bat-like furriness. All right, so he's got some fur, but I think I bat-like. I do want to add some some ears up top here. Oh yes. There we go. There's our there's our good friend. <laughs> uh, look at this. The the ears are the exact same shape as the tongues. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's a uh, a cursed symmetry. <laughs> um all right, so what <laughs> I want this thing to come at me and start talking to me. 
Well, I think that before it it spoke in a high pitched voice, but now that I know a little more about it, I think it goes like Sothogwa. Sothogwa. You hear all three voices at once. <laughs> so I'm gonna give a little more little tufts of hair. I'm gonna make these tongues kind of like lull out a little bit too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Although I, I like the symmetry of them, so I'm not gonna wreck that. We've got to get some girth. Oh, don't worry. <laughs> right now, right now I'm seeing a lot of gaunt, but not a lot of girth. I mean, that's the fun thing about Lovecraft is uh, they're confusing and beyond human perspective and perception. Right. Let's go ahead and just shrink this perfect face that I've drawn a little bit. Uh-huh. And I think that, like, like most of these, these things, I don't think you can, like, really see the full scale of them. Right. They're too big. Yeah. I'm just going to draw. Maybe he's just kind of, like, chilling on some sort of, like, cosmic couch. As you do. <laughs> if you find a cosmic couch, you you got to chill on it a little. It's true. He's so relaxed. Mm -hmm. Now he looks like he's trying out for Riverdale. (laughs) So, (laughs) dodgeball. Hey, volleyball tryouts are that way. (laughs) I, 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 actually, I'm here to try to be Archie. Uh, I think I'd be a really good Archie. I'm the new Archie. I do really well with the uh, ancient horrors demo. Uh, (laughs) You know, the ancient horrors, eighteen to thirty-four million. Hey, Thog. Uh, hey, producer uh, Mike here. Um, you know, I know you tried out for Archie, but we really love you as Jughead. What do you think? <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> I do love hamburgers, so. <laughs> wow. So I, am, I, I do think that um, uh, so Thogwa is basically just the cosmic Jughead. He just chills in and eats burgers, and his followers um, provide burgers unto him as sacrifices. Look, look, here, here's the deal. Here's a real passage. Uh, he will not rise from his place, even in the ravening of hunger, but he will wait in divine slothfulness for the sacrifice. Wow. He has little inky black spawn, the, the formless spawn that are like blacky, black inky... Nothings that go get sacrifices for it. They go. They go. For they the go on. So he has postmates. He has postmates. <laughs> yeah. Get me the get me the crispy chicken quesadilla. Mm-hmm. It's got chicken nuggets inside the quesadilla. It looks, <laughs> it looks gross, but I have to try it. <laughs> All right. Last thing, I'm gonna shift his eyes, and he's gonna be addressing his inky subject, who has brought him. Uh, the, the latest uh, gordita from Taco Bell, <laughs> from the Taco Bell test kitchen. <laughs> Y'all, apparently they're opening a uh, something called a Taco Bell Cantina. And apparently it's good, just like a Taco Bell, but they serve alcohol. Oh, uh, and I'm just, oh. I'm real worried about what that means for me in my life. You can get Baja blasted. Exactly. Finally, <laughs> the prophecy come true. It's going to be so rough, though, because I feel like I'm going to be there and there's just going to be thousands of these inky black spawn waiting in line. Is this just a heartless? Uh, I was going to do, I I had like a a design I wanted to try out, which was just something like, just something like that. Kind of like a, uh, this is just like dark Baymax, I guess. (laughs) Is this what I've drawn? It sure is. (laughs) He doesn't get to eat also because he's, he's delivering. So it's a it's a slim down Baymax. Mm-hmm. That's their that's their curse. Uh, he's delivering a plate of spaghetti. He went to the Olive Garden. Got got that OG to go for for our main man. <laughs> <laughs> Did you remember to bring the punch card? <laughs> My lord, no, I have neglected the punch card. No, please, <laughs> I don't have pockets. <laughs> he neglected to give me pockets. <laughs> Look, I'm not trying to micromanage here because that requires too much work, but um, I am going to devour you because you have failed me. You are going to rejoin my infinite form. Okay. Do I still get Do I still get tips? Yeah, yeah, you do. Yeah, here's a tip. Uh You're fired. You're fired. <laughs> nice. Nice. He, he just you know, one mouth says it, the other mouth says nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love this dude. <laughs> the <laughs> the infinite jughead, <laughs> Safagua. Um, I am gonna give him one extra nipple in the middle here. Okay. Oh no. And then I think I'm. Then I think I'm good to go. Yeah, there he is. 
Um, I'm ready to have this taken from me. All right, well, let's look up Safagua. Oh, oh there he is. Wow. You got pretty close, actually. <laughs> that's God, that's so much funnier than what I drew. <laughs> <laughs> it's pr it's pretty close, though. Like, yeah, in some ways. The whole demeanor and like the tongue sticking out. He is the jughead of <laughs> uh, fucking Lovecraftian nightmare gods. Uh, he looks like, you know, somebody that Hellboy would be friends with. And that's honestly the highest marks I can give myself. <laughs> Well, now we've come to the, the final contender. Julia, are you ready? Oh, yeah. Uh, your Lovecraftian nightmare. Elder thing. <laughs> yeah. uh, six feet end to end. Three and five tenths feet central diameter. Tapering <laughs> to one foot at each end. Like a barrel with five bulging ridges in place of staves. Lateral breakages. As finished stalks are at... Equator in middle of these ridges. I stopped listening somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Julia's eyes glazed over and like a, she has started drawing. It is good, good. It's, it's a, kind of a vegetable. It, it kind of looks like a little bit like a vegetable, like an evil vegetable. It also has wings, just, just I, FYI. <laughs> <laughs> just gonna toss that out there. Good to know, Do good to know. <laughs> A little bucket of wings. We kind of already did a fast food situation. We did, we did, we did. <laughs> did you say six feet end to end? Uh, end to end while standing up. Okay, that's such a like very that's very specific for HP. That's not a that's not as big as a lot of them. They they are like a, a race or species that came to Earth like a billion years ago, colonized <laughs> Earth may have created life, whatever. If you know the setup to the movie The Thing, it's almost exactly The Thing. A bunch of researchers in Antarctica find a uh, spaceship, basically, an old civilization, and they find a bunch of frozen elder things. And then, and then shit goes bad real fast. The more descriptive HP is, the worse the name for the character is, which I like. That's a good, a good ratio. <laughs> Zoinks, here come the elder things. <laughs> 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 oh, the elder thing was just old man Jenkins the whole time. <laughs> I would have gotten away with it too if it weren't for you meddling investigators from Miskatonic University. <laughs> That's in uni it's a little in universe love. That was good. Yeah. I like that. That was a uh, a good specific. Any any Lovecraft purists will uh, will appreciate that. <laughs> Does Scooby Doo ever investigate Lovecraft shit other than in like a million pieces of fan art? Hmm. Uh, Zoink, Scooby, what the fuck is that? <laughs> is it still that, like, the actual episodes, it's usually just some real estate agent trying to lower the property value? Well, I mean, Basically. almost always. But there then, was some movies. But then in the movies, it's always, like, there are actually aliens or some There's shit. There's actually zombies. In that, and then in The 13 Ghosts of Scooby-Doo, where uh, they open a box of ghosts that's in Vincent Price's house, and Vincent Price gets really mad at them, and they got to put the ghost back in the box. And that's the plot of the 13 Ghosts of Scooby-Doo. More property should feature Vincent Price being upset with you, I think. <laughs> I think I feel like there's a, a hard, a finite limit to uh, those things these days. And that's, uh, that's sad. Yeah. I, you know, we could, we could maybe do some CG, uh, but I, it might be in bad taste. You're right. This is great so far, though. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. It's definitely a thing. It's definitely a thing, huh? Um, it is an it is an elder thing, so I, I almost wonder if we, if we if it should show its age in some way. I mean, this definitely looks like something that Tim Burton sculpted out of clay. Yeah, it's got a mouth inside its mouth. <laughs> There's too many mouths. <laughs> it's like a little bit of it's a little wormy guy. Mm -hmm. It's the only thing I could parse from all of the words that Tristan <laughs> threw at me. Six feet end to end. Don't forget. Put a basketball player lying <laughs> down next to it. You know, I love a good thorax on, on a monster, on a, on a, on a terror. Uh, <laughs> what do you guys want? Is this just Barney Gumble? Yeah. <laughs> uh, don't cry for me. I'm already dead. <laughs> oh, yeah. Ooh, some, 
some dripping tears. Very good. Hey, Tristan, wait, did H.P. Lovecraft like pus? <laughs> what was my man's opinion on pus? <laughs> well, his AIM screen name was Pus Lover 87 <laughs> That's what the P in H.P. stands for, right? <laughs> Hella pus? Hella pus Lovecraft. <laughs> Ooh, are these like, are these eyes or spots? Or just, they're holes. They're just holes. Oh, cool. You know, if it's a plant, it's gotta have some way to let in all of the plant stuff. Uh-huh, the plant stuff. That's you, uh, That's how photosynthesis works. The plant sucks up a bunch of plant stuff uh, and it stays alive. Yeah, and oh, there are the wings. Oh, no. Gotta get go. the wings. Yep, uh, that'll do it right there. <laughs> <laughs> Billions uh, of years of evolution have, have brought forth these wings. <laughs> I used to be able to soar through the skies majestically, <laughs> and now these are but a relic of a better time. <laughs> this is the ultimate peak of evolution. This is what uh, this is what evolution is uh, conspiring towards for everyone. <laughs> it's just to be cool worms. Oh, okay, all right. Now just a classic... Uh, a classic Julia acute angle entering the picture. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to see what this looks like. I'm liking it. I'm liking it. They can't fly anymore, but they can still tap dance. <laughs> <laughs> Scuttle. Yeah, it's... <laughs> oh, look hey, at this. Hey, I don't... I don't know. I don't like that I can see its leg through its body. <laughs> I don't like it. I love it. <laughs> give me, Give me more. Oh, more? That's enough legs. More legs? That's enough <laughs> legs. <laughs> no, I, you know, all right. Oh. Just, you know what, just two more. That's all you get. Oh. <laughs> I I like, allowed, oh. I'm allowed a two leg limit in this video. Oh. I like the idea that these legs do not actually help it move. They're just there to be unsettling and like click around. The fun thing, I was looking up on the Wikipedia for H.P. Lovecraft while we were doing this, and it says that he spent a lot of his life kind of in uh, a small apartment in Brooklyn, which makes me realize that he is just, he's just like that weird guy you know. He's 100% that weird guy you know that's like, I'm working on some spooky stories. Oh, he's the guy who's always on the stoop out in front of my uh, my apartment building. Yeah, he's definitely like the guy that would have the typewriter uh, out in Central Park and be like, you know, like $5 and I'll write you a story right here and now. Except that I think he was a little more of a shut-in, so maybe not that. He was also very racist, oh, right? Ext extremely racist. Yeah, yeah, okay. You wouldn't want any to take any street literature from H.P. Lovecraft. <laughs> it would be... Full of screeds, uh, uh, untellable. I, I looked at his picture on Wikipedia, and he's got like a real, <laughs> he's a real Richard Spencer ass motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. That's one of the most terrifying parts is grappling with, uh, you know, s someone you whose work you like is 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 awful. The most horrifying aspect of modern society will drive you mad. <laughs> My favorite thing about this drawing is you could have given Julia uh, the name Bulbasaur and we would have probably gotten the same thing. <laughs> well, we wouldn't have the wings. There's wings. Uh, you said something about it being six feet end to end, which made me think of a worm. What else we got in that description? I blacked out somewhere in there, so I'd like a repeat, please. I keep hitching on six feet end to end because it's like somebody tried to describe something sexily and doing a very bad job. <laughs> it's like, ooh, baby. They were six feet in to end. It's like, what, do you, what do you mean? Let me tell you about this thing's lateral break. <laughs> <laughs> lateral breakage. <laughs> Their symmetry was divine. <laughs> Let me tell you about their bones. They got them all. Ooh, tongue bumpies. I that's you know a lot of artists forget about the tongue bumpies, but not not our Julia. <laughs> no, Julia remembers the tongue bumpies. It definitely tastes you when it devours you. Mm -hmm. Right, mm -hmm. and that's important. Oh, and this is a racing stripe. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty sharp. Oh no, we just got. <laughs> oh no, another mouth. That's Can another we get one. it? Hey. Hey, yeah. what do the what do the fans want? They want one more mouth. <laughs> ah! Yeah. <laughs> well, you got to make up for mine that had no mouths. Mm -hmm. Right. I'm trying to land on an in between between the two of you. Apparently, <laughs> it's just a big neon sign that says "one more mouth" and it lights up. 
<laughs> the audience goes nuts. <laughs> oh, this one, that's a happy mouth. Yeah, he's just happy to be there. He's yeah. just like, and I'm back here too. Hey, I'm just here to uh, propagate a race of, of humanoids on this planet. <laughs> when I barf, does it count as poop? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Consider that. <laughs> you know, I, I remember when people just called me Thing. <laughs> Elder thing. Oh boy, I, I really must be showing my age. Well, let me devour you. Yeah. Is there anything else I'm missing, Tristan? Uh, <laughs> I, I, get any? I don't know if you can draw more. <laughs> hey, don't challenge me to draw more. I'll do it. Oh no. Hey, what if what if they unveiled the new the next generation of Pokemon and it was all very cute monsters and then just this thing? <laughs> <laughs> The, the legendary Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> Which start are you gonna choose? Uh, fire, fire bat, um, water snake, or uh, Eldross the unknowable? <laughs> Julie just drew a Pokemon creepy pasta. I, like, yeah. I, I found this cartridge. Pokemon <laughs> Void. <laughs> <laughs> it's just labeled Bulbasaur, but I know it's not. It's the only monster I can catch. And it knows my name? <laughs> slowly, if if I catch another Pokemon, it slowly turns into this one. Game Boy Color didn't come with any vibration capabilities, and yet it trembles whenever this creature's on screen. I'm playing it on an old Game Boy Pocket, but it's in color for some reason. I'm very confused. <laughs> Also, when I play it, nothing else in the world has color? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I like. I want to keep the conversation going because I know that Julie is just going to keep just horror jazz all over this canvas. <laughs> <laughs> we should do we should do a full episode, like a full thirty minutes, where Julia just draws the entire time. We don't give her any prompts, and we just chat <laughs> and just see what happens by the end. I don't I don't know, like I don't know if you guys are familiar with uh, like Zen tangles of like uh, very therapeutic uh, drawings that people make uh, after stressful like like post post trauma. Uh, they're ver- they're very helpful and therapeutic. This is like the opposite of a <laughs> This is constant trauma. This is just hurting me. If we hired a therapist to sit in on one of these drawfies, uh, I don't know, it would be very illuminating for all of us. Yeah. She would take me away as a study. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or be like, I am not, I am not prepared. I do, do not have the training. I don't want to. I don't want to stop talking because I know if we keep talking long enough, Julie's going to slap a propeller on this thing. <laughs> we've got to. We've got to end the episode right. though. We've got to <laughs> yeah, let yeah, the yeah. people All go right. back to their lives. Let me uh, look this, this homeboy up. This is. Yeah, yeah. Let's see what <laughs> the the elder thing. Oh. 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 It's just. Uh, He's like a flower. It's a big vegetable. This looks like a, a low-level Final Fantasy villain. Yeah. <laughs> I like my guy better. I yeah. like your guy way better. Thank you. He's more smiley. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you guys having a good time. Well, guys, happy October. We're going to be laying it on thick with all the, the spooky episodes for the rest of the month. Yeah, the, these are these are your new uh, your new gods. Worship them, love them. Bring them hamburgers. Bring them burgers. Uh, leave a suggestion of other uh, spooky stuff you want to see us draw, or just other stuff you want to see us draw. Absolutely. And um, maybe we'll draw it. And check us out on all of our various other platforms. We got a Facebook page. We all got Twitters. We yeah. we're on Twitch. Uh, we're on Snapchat, we're on Instagram. You know, if if you want Drawfee uh, on all platforms, you got it. We're even on the secret platform, Gunth. Yeah. Oh, can you guys give me an invite to Gunth? I'm sorry, it's secret. <laughs> the, the This is it. We did it. <laughs> <laughs> we're Sothothari. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. Bye.